the hair and say, Lord, I thank you. Say, Lord, I thank you. Say, Lord, there's a roof up above me and I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me.
the roof of above me of a good place to sleep there's food on my table and shoes on my feet you gave me your love Lord and a fine family our God's people say thank you for your blessing since on Father, we thank you. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We bless you this morning, Lord, because it is you who has forgiven all our iniquities. We bless you, Lord, because it is you who has satisfied our mouth with good things. We bless you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We bless you, Father, for crowning us, Father God, with your favor and covering us with your wings. Thank you because we dwell in your secret place. We abide under your shadow. And we say today confidently that you are our God, our Lord, and in you we trust. Father, we appreciate you. We celebrate your faithfulness over our lives. Blessed be your name, our Father. This morning again, we ask that you reveal that mercy, reveal that goodness, Reveal that faithfulness, even as we sit before you to receive from you the engrafted word that has the capacity, the power to transform. Do it, O oh God, for your name's sake and for your glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, you may be seated as you put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, it's for Jesus. It's for the Lord. So let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. It's a great privilege for me again to be here this morning to share with you from God's word. I want to appreciate the senior pastor for this privilege. And I want to also thank Mommy and the Sunday school leadership for asking me to be the guest minister on this day that the Sunday school is celebrating uh, the Sunday school rally. Amen. So don't see me as uh, you used to see me before. I'm the guest minister today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was asked to share with you this morning on the importance of Sunday school. The importance of Sunday school. And I, I would like us to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. Praise God. The Bible says, I'm reading from the King James Version. He say, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, 
till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Uh, in this scripture and several others, we see that the primary duty of the church is to raise disciples. The primary responsibility in Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That was the last word Jesus gave his people. He gave the disciples. He gave his followers. The last word before he ascended into heaven. That this is my assignment for you. This is what you should pursue. This is your job description. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he said, the tool you need, the tool you require to undertake this assignment is teaching. He said, teaching them to observe all things. So the tool is teaching, and the place where you must bring them to is to the point where they observe all things that I have commanded you. So as a church, God expects us to use the tool of teaching to bring everyone that is a follower of Christ to the point whereby they become people that observe all that he has commanded. So if the people we are leading are not observing all that he has commanded, we have not succeeded in bringing them to where God wants them to be. Praise the Lord. And then of course... From where we read in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That is another dimension of the, the place God wants us to bring the followers of Christ to. Where everyone is fully equipped to run after God's assignment for his life. So if you are a follower of Christ and is seated in this congregation today. And you are not yet there pursuing the reason why you are alive. The reason why God created you. You need to discover it and begin to pursue it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So. The primary duty of the church is to raise disciples through the instrument of teaching to bring them to a point where they observe everything Jesus has commanded and also to bring them to the point where they discover their callings, they discover their assignments and are pursuing it. When we succeed in doing that as a church, we've carried out our duty 
and our assignment that God has given to us. Now, who is a disciple? Who is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Christ. A devoted follower of Christ. A devoted follower. Follower. I'm emphasizing that word follower. You cannot be a true disciple of Christ if you are not following in his footsteps. You are following, that means is you are looking up to him. You are imitating him. You are following to become like him. You are following to operate like him. To love like him. To live like him. Praise the Lord. A follower of Christ who is a disciple is also a cross carrier. A cross carrier. We are living in a generation called the entitled generation. People are only interested in what they can receive from God. What is in need for them? But a true follower of Christ, a true disciple of, disciple of Christ, it's not so much concern about what God will do for him than what God will do through him. His concern is more in what God will do through him than what God will do for him. Because at the end of the day, a true disciple is one who will say, even God is killing me. I will yet serve him. That's a true disciple. Even if God is killing me, I will yet serve him. That is the mindset of a disciple. So a disciple is a carrier of the cross. You know, when Jesus carried the cross on his way to Golgotha, to be hanged on that cross, it was God who placed that thing on him? In other words, it's like God was killing him. Hallelujah. He was sentenced to death in order to fulfill the purpose of God. I'm not saying God is going to kill you. Right? But I'm saying that no matter what comes to you in life, if you are a true follower and a true disciple of Christ, you will not compromise your stand and your commitment to him. Praise the Lord. So, Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, if anyone desires to be my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A cross carrier has moved away from self-life to Christ's life. That it was what happened. Your life, the desires you know, to, or, or, of this life is not what is you know, kind of motivating you or pushing you. Your desire is to see that Christ is formed in you. That becomes your obsession. Praise the Lord. A follower of Christ does not walk in darkness. John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. A follower of Christ does not associate with the works of darkness. Does not play around darkness. You know, darkness is a medium, just as light is also a medium. And there are forces that control the two mediums. There is the father of light and the father of lies who controls darkness. So the medium in which you operate determines the person that have oversight uh, control over your life. Praise the Lord. So a disciple does not walk in darkness. A disciple walks in the light because the father of light is his master. A disciple also 
serves Christ with all his strength. John chapter 12 verse 26 says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my disciple will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. A true disciple serves. He serves God with all his strength. To serve God with all your strength simply means you serve God with all your abilities. Your mental strength, your financial strength, your intellectual strength, everything that you have, you throw it into the service of God. That's a sign of a true disciple. No wonder. Paul, a good example of a disciple said, all the things that he count as anything, he said, they've become like a piece of dung that he may win Christ and become like him and be conformed into his image. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then, of course, a true disciple, I mean disciple, hears and obeys the voice of his master. He says in John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You can't qualify as a true follower of Jesus, you can't qualify as a true disciple of Jesus when you hear other voices and follow them instead of the voice of the one that has called you. I know there are so many voices around. There are so many voices. A true disciple knows, understands, hears, and obeys the voice of his master. And then the last one, a true disciple lives in time with eternity in view. He lives in time with eternity in view. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2, the message Bible says, So, if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ. Act like it. Act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Pursue the things over which Christ is interested. Don't shuffle along. Eyes on the ground. Absorb with the things right in front of you. Simply means don't be so carried away by the things of this life. They will soon fade away. They will soon fade away. Praise the Lord. He said, look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Hallelujah. A true disciple see things from the perspective of Christ. Perspective of his master. You know, when you sit too long under a master, his ideology and everything about his teachings, you know, you absorb them. And over time, you begin to think like him. You begin to behave like that, like that master. That is why... The situation we have in the Northeast is because those guys have been indoctrinated. The Boko Boys, as they are popularly called, have been indoctrinated. And they now, they don't think for, for themselves. They have become like zombies. Hallelujah. Because they only see things from the perspective of their leaders. And so when the leader say, put on, strap yourself with explosive and go and detonate it in the midst of, you know, school children, they will do that. They are ready to do anything. Because they see things from the perspective of their masters. Just imagine, if you see things only from Christ's perspective, your life will not be where it is today. Hallelujah. So to be a disciple making church, we must have a very strong 
teaching ministry. And one of the arms of the church that will help in doing that is the Sunday school. The Sunday school. Amen? Because as we saw, disciples are raised through teaching. You say, and teach them to observe all that I command you. The process of discipleship requires a deliberate and systematic work. It's not an event, it's a process. It's not a one-off thing. You must do it again and again, a little here, a little there, you know, line by line and all that. You must do it deliberately and systematically because transformation is not an accident. Transformation is a process, deliberate process that is done through the teaching, the transformation of the mind. The transformation of men's perspective, how they see things. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 12, we saw, or we, we, we read, how our mental pictures will determine our actual future, will determine what we become. We see how our current thought, dominant thought, will determine the direction our life will go. And that is why Paul emphasized there that your transformation is tied to what you see through the eye of the mind. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that can only happen through teaching. Because even if you pray, and you know the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10, that is a pulling down, you know, imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When you pull it down and you don't put anything there, the enemy will go roam around and when he returns and discovers that the place is empty, you know, clean, and you bring seven more strongholds that will become very difficult to deal with. Praise the Lord. Because nature abhors vacuum. So you must put something into that mind. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 describe the process of success. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night, and observe to do all that is written therein. The day and night there is the process. It's not a one-off thing. It's over and over, day and night, observe continuously, observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then... Then you make your way prosperous and you have good success. Praise the Lord. And of course, we know that the aim is to bring the disciples to a place where they will obey all the commandments of the Lord. Praise the Lord. As a child of God, your walk with God is determined by the level of influence the Word of God has over your life. How much the word of God influences your life will determine your walk with God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. He said that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord. So your walking worthy of the Lord is determined by the level of influence of his word over your life. If the level of influence is minimal, your work with God will be erratic. It will not be consistent. But when the word of God influences your life so much, you discover that everything you're sitting, you're rising, everything you do will be in line with the dictates of that word. He said that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. So how much you have his word hidden in your life, in your, in your heart, will determine how much you please God. Because God can only be pleased when things are done according to his will. And what will make you to do things according to the will of God 
is what is controlling you. And when the word of God is the thing that is controlling you, you discover that you will never go contrary to the will of God because the will of God is his word. Praise the Lord. In fact, your effectiveness in prayer is also directly proportional to the influence of the word. How effective you are in the place of prayer. For, for, for a long while now, my prayer life has changed. And I'm still evolving. I'm still discovering things. But sincerely, the way I used to pray last year is not the way I pray this year. And I get more results this year than I used to get last year. Because I, there, was, there was a shift. There was an understanding. When I understood this scripture, can we look at um, um, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20? Give it to me in message, Bible please, multimedia quickly. Ephesians chapter 3. When, I, when, when God gave me the understanding of this scripture that my, my prayer life, my prayer, uh, the potency of my prayer is directly dependent on the state of my mind. He said, God can do anything you know far more than you could imagine or guess or request. So your prayer request is at the same level with your mental states. You can come here and shout and jump and do everything if your mind is not vibrating at the frequency of the word of God. You have just wasted your time. He said, multimedia, please don't take that scripture away. He said, God can do anything, anything you know, anything you know, far more than you could even imagine, ever imagine, or guess or request in your wildest dreams he does it not by pushing us around but by walking within us within us and how does god walk within us through his word to bring us into alignment with the word. So when you stand here to pray and your mind is in alignment with the word of God, everything you say in the place of prayer will be answered. But when your mind shifts, it's not in alignment. you just be, you know, going off point. Hallelujah. That is why before you go into the place of prayer, sit down and determine, consider what is the will of God concerning that thing you are praying about. So that you don't waste your time. Hallelujah. You can pray 10 minutes of effective prayer and get result. And then you can pray a whole night of hitting, beating the air, boxing the air without anything to show for it. What would determine that is the state of your mind. He said, desire a thing and I will bring it to pass. It's your mind. Desire is the mind is the seat of desire. Praise the Lord. So, we are seeing all these things because the word of God is the instrument we use to teach, to bring the disciples to that, that, that level. Where when they pray, their prayers will be answered. In fact, you will come to a state in your life, your thoughts alone. You will just be thinking something and God will answer your thoughts. Praise the Lord. You just be thinking. Because that thought is in alignment. God will just answer that thought. Praise the Lord. So, Sunday school is one of the arms of the church that provides you know, the platform for that systematic and deliberate teaching of the word of God. And in Foursquare, Sunday school is divided into about six stages you have the new convert class where those who uh, are new in the faith are schooled are, are discipled are trained or whatever word you can use to know what they believe 
to feed them with the sincere milk of the word of God that they may grow thereby. That's the, the new convert class. And then after the new convert class, we have the reception class. And of course, the reception class is for new people, perhaps that are coming into the church or uh, new convert that want to join the Sunday school and go through the process. You go through the um, reception class where you'll be received and also to confirm you know, your status in terms of your relationship with God. And then from there, you move to the baptismal class where your faith in God is further consolidated so that when we take you through the process of baptism, it will not just be like washing your feet with your socks on. Right? Can you imagine trying to wash your feet with your socks on? Will it work? No. So when you bring somebody that is not born again, that does not know, you know, how... Um, that is not really fully persuaded about his status as a child of God, you bring him to be baptized, it's like trying to wash your feet with your socks on. You have to remove the garment of sin for you to be baptized. And then from there, you move to the membership class. And in the membership class, you are there to know what we believe in. As you saw this morning, the people that were received into the membership of Four Square Gospel Church Asokoro, they went through the membership class. We have 22 tenants of faith, and you need to go through them to know what we believe, so as to see whether you agree with us, or if there are things in what we believe that you don't agree with, we, of course, uh, ask you to go and search further. Because we can't accept you into membership if you don't believe what we believe in. Can two work together? Except they agree. So you need to go through the uh, uh, 22 tenets of faith and subscribe to all that we believe in. Before you will now be taken in as a member. You've now become a full member of Four Square Gospel Church. Not only in Nigeria, not only in Asokoro, but worldwide. Praise the Lord. Of course, in, in church, in every... Uh, four square church we have two kinds of people we have people that have been accepted into membership and then we have worshipers praise the lord of course you are still part of us but there are certain privileges that members will enjoy that will, will not be available for worshipers praise the lord there's no time to go into that and then after that you go into workers in training and in workers in training, you go through the process of discovering your gifts. Discovering where God wants you to serve. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing what? The word of truth. So, before God will approve you, he must first of all take you through that process of development. So that you now... Come to a point where he can trust you with responsibility. Somewhere in the book of uh, uh, Timothy, Paul was instructing Timothy that he shouldn't just lay hands on people suddenly. And then he shouldn't bring novice, appoint novice into a place of service. Because service is for the mature in Christ. Praise the Lord. And that is where the workers in training uh, class is very, very also crucial in the Sunday school uh, process. And then finally, we have the adult class. And there, in the adult class, all those who have gone through all the processes uh, can now uh, learn more about God, more about the doctrines of Christ, week after week, to grow in their knowledge of Christ. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5.17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. So in the adult class, you are helped, you know, in, to grow in the word, understanding of the doctrines, so that when you go out there to labor for the kingdom, you labor appropriately. And when you do that, the Bible says you'll be worthy of double honor. Praise the Lord. 
Now, before I conclude, I want to say something. There are two ways you can approach your relationship with God as a child of God. There are two ways, you know, I see Christians operate in church. There are those Christians that are so much concerned about power. Now, it's good. It's good because without power, you will be limited in your operation as a child of God. Now, what power does is that it solves your problem. It solves your problem. In Acts 10 verse 38, he said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. He went about solving problems for people. So power solve your problem. But word encounter changes your life. So if you are the type that is so preoccupied with power, 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 when it is Bible study, you are not there. But when it is deliverance service, it is an anointing service, it is a power must change hand, that is what moves you. Your problem will be solved, but your growth will be limited. Are you with me? And you know, when we appear before him, it is not about power. It's about the image of whom you have become. Praise the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, as we behold him like in a glass, that is the word. What happens? We are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So, word encounter changes you. Power encounter solves your problem. Now, it is good to combine the two. It is good, you know, to go for the two. But don't stay in the place of power alone. Go for what? Go for transformation. Because we are living in a world today where power is overemphasized. And people can go to anywhere to acquire power because they want to display power. But brethren, on that day, it is not what you have done with power that will speak for you. It is what you have become in Christ that will speak for you. And so I want to encourage everyone that is here today that is a member of this assembly and you have not been part of the Sunday school. That is where you will go and have power encounters that will change your life day by day until you become like Christ. And I want to invite everyone that has not been part of Sunday school to join this Sunday school and receive that word encounter that will bring about a change in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we rise as we appreciate the Lord this morning? Are you a follower of Jesus? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Is your life in conformity with the commandment of Jesus? He said, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Are you observing everything Jesus has commanded? Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Please, I want you to pray for yourself this morning. Can you ask God this morning, Oh Lord, beam your such light on me. Beam your such light on my life. Beam your such light on my life. Where I am not measuring up. Where my life is not measuring up to the life of a true disciple. Oh Lord, help me. Can you pray that prayer for yourself? Ask God for help. Where you are not measuring up. Remember, the ultimate goal, the ultimate desire of God is for all of us to become disciples. To become like him. So I want you to pray. Oh God. 
any area of my life that I'm not measuring up as a disciple. Send help. Send help, I pray. Send help in the name of Jesus. Send help, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. And if you are here this morning, you have not even been initiated into that life of a disciple. Perhaps you have not even given your life to Christ. You are still struggling with sin. You are still struggling, you know, with the works of the flesh. There is no way you can succeed in following Christ the way he has prescribed if you have not surrendered that life to him. I want to give those who want to surrender their life to Christ, want to come into that walk with him. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you are in the congregation and you are that person I just mentioned and you want me to pray for you, say, Pastor, I want to receive this, this Jesus. I want to walk with him. I want him to be my Lord. I want him to, 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 to help me, to transform me. If you are that person, can I see your hand and I'll pray with you. Anybody like that in the congregation, you want me to pray with you? Yes. Anybody? You want Jesus to be your Lord? You want him to start, you know, that walk with you? To become a disciple, a man after his heart. If you are there, raise your hand quickly. And I'll pray with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that hand. Any more? Any more? Any more persons that want to receive Jesus? You want him to be your Lord? You want him to forgive your sin? You want him to give you the power to live for him? That's what we're saying. If you're in the congregation, please come. Please come. Please come. You can't do it on, you know, on your own. You need his help. You need his help. You need him to break, you know, the power of sin over your life. Please come. Any more? Any more? Any more? You want to be a disciple of Jesus? Can you pray with me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Today, I receive you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Give me the power to overcome sin and to live for you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for this, brother. I ask you, Lord, that your power will be upon me. And I ask, Father God, that you grant me a new heart and a new day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please pray with that, brother, and then he will pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. We ask Jehovah that your desire and your expectations concerning us will not be disappointed. You went to the cross and you died that we may become like you. You took our form. You took our frailty. You took our sin that you may bring us, Father God, to your level to become like you. We ask, O oh God, that this morning you release grace. Let there be a release of grace. In any area of our life that we are not measuring up, Lord, release grace in the mighty name of Jesus. That everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, will come into alignment with your desire and with your expectation for their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.